No, really? Hey, thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Mike and V Bodybuilding Show. Today on location at Independence Gym in Scottsdale. Uh, excited to bring you Striker X. How's it going, Mike? It's going good, dude. Yeah. Uh, we are now at what? Episode 14? Episode we 14. We have agreed upon 14? We have agreed on 14. Right. I know they're mislabeled, so when you go to episode 12, there's two of them. But it's not the same person that we interviewed, so uh, keep that in mind. Anyway, <laughs> long story longer. Um, yeah, back at Independence Gym. Uh, Striker X, uh, you know, MPC legend. He's uh, now an IFBB promoter, bringing us the Phoenix Pro. Uh, wants to take uh, professional bodybuilding to another level. He's here to talk about that. Striker, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thank you, thank you guys. Excited up, to have you, man. Welcome in. By the way, dude, what's going on with all this muscle here? You know, it's the biggest I've seen you. I've followed your diet. <laughs> this, this guy's pumped and up. He just came out of the gym. Sign up with VJ. <laughs> this is about you. This is the, this is the striker interview. Come oh, on. God. We want to make it about you. But, but in, all, in all seriousness, we are excited, excited to have you on the show. We we're actually very excited, and we do apologize. We, we were supposed to be here yesterday, but unfortunately, other things come up. I know, point the finger at me, but yeah. things did come up, so we, we appreciate you coming back on the show. Mike, honestly, you're a bodybuilder, you're never on time. That's <laughs> just so <laughs> What time did I tell you I had to be here today, Mike? Yes, he told me I had to be here at 12.45 today, because I am never what time on time. Did we have to be here? We had to be here at 1, so I, you know, told Mike, hey. <laughs> My hat's off to you guys for making it here. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, so, so Stryker, let me, let me start off by asking right. you, you have a really interesting story. Um, you know, I had a four, young 14-year-old uh, in uh, Afri West Africa. West Africa. Yeah. What, what's the name of the... Liberia. 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 Liberia at 14. Tell us, tell us what happened that day when you, the first um, time you saw 135. Well, uh, I grew up poor, you know, not, you know, a little more than what poor in the States, you know. Um, and we didn't have nothing, but I was, I was fortunate enough to go to a school. My parents did their best to where I could go to a good school. And you have your business, you have, you have your BA. Long time ago, yep. many, many moons ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was in school where very wealthy, you know, parents send their kids. Mm -hmm. So they picked me up one day, you know, I played soccer my whole life. Uh, let's go to the gym. I didn't know what, that, what a gym meant at the time, you uh -huh. know. I knew field, you know, you go yeah. play soccer at the soccer right. field. You figure you're gonna go catch the yeah, ball. Yeah, um, right. I figured, you know, okay, I'll go to the gym, big deal. Yeah. You know, I was excited. I just saw these guys trying to lift a bar, or, you know, but it was interesting to me. Mm -hmm. It looked like a strongman thing. Mm -hmm. And my dad used to be a powerlifter, but he didn't tell me at the time. I had no powerlifting again comes back into play. Yeah, <laughs> so I watched him try to bench the bar and pull it. So they put a 45 on each side, and I'm like, interested, you know. Mm -hmm. It grabbed me. Mm -hmm. Right there, you knew what you're destined to do in life. Uh -huh. That moment, you know. That was it. And none, none, that was it. And none could do it. And these guys train every day. I've never lifted a plate in my life. Uh -huh. So I waited. I wanted to be last to see what you need to do. <laughs> sure, uh, sure. See? Not, not, you know, I was ignorant. Man, yeah, I was, I was ignorant, but I wasn't stupid. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, well, you get on the bench <laughs> and you lift it up, you bring it out, you keep pushing it back up and down. You know, okay, big deal. Yeah. So when I got there, you know, I was excited. I grabbed the bar, you know, with all my might, you know, and took it off the bench and benched it. Like, Repped it out. And, dude, I was in love with it. I, I didn't want to stop. <laughs> that was me. Sure. Yeah. And by the time I was done, they were all gone. Yeah. And mind you, I lived like 10 miles away from the gym. It was a little hole behind, a, 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 I think, a tire shop. And behind the, the gym was a bakery. So uh -huh. you're screwed either way. Right. Yeah. 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 The fumes of the bread and the heat and yeah. the tire shop people. And the guy that owned the gym was Mr. Lebanon, 1968. Uh -huh. I've never seen a guy with a big chest like this guy. Wow. Right. I mean, when I saw it, like, I would just look at him and stare. Uh -huh. And I wanted to be like him. That's who you would credit to. That, like, exactly. that was the guy. That was we the ask guy. that question all the time on the show. Who's that person that That's you could see stand out? The guy's name was Mahmoud Shihab. Uh, he was Mr. Lebanon, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 1960. Big chest, man. Uh, Sorry, Melissa. I think this guy was a little bigger than you. Uh, oh, boy. Here we go. We got our video. <laughs> got, the Iron Doll. The Iron Doll. Now we all know I'm here. <laughs> you know, if I'm not looking at you, it doesn't mean I don't like you. I'm just thinking of the past, you know. Uh, but anyway, we'll love you. <laughs> so I told you it was going to be a good interview. <laughs> and uh, he would 
First thing he taught me how to do pull, uh, uh, barbell pullovers. Uh -huh. He would always grab my little baby lats and, you know, yeah, do it like this and, you know, see what I'll copy. And we had a, the Joe, you don't remember the Joe Weeder, uh, you know, things you put on the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yes. The principles. How to live <laughs> and yes. barbell, you know. Yeah, you? yeah. And there were, there was, he had a bunch of them on the wall. Uh -huh. And I'll go look at each one, okay, and I'll come back and I'll ask him, he's like, yeah, yeah, do it just like, just look at the picture and go do it. Yeah. <laughs> and he would look at me and shake his head. But... A couple of years after that, uh, that's when I did my first, I, I think I was like 16, early going, going into 17, I did my first competition over there. Mm -hmm. And I did really well, and he came and shook my hand. That was the first guy that showed me how to lift, and the first guy, you know, to actually give me a chance. Take yeah. the time And to... from there, you know, I was, it was it. Yeah, it's so, awesome. You know. Well, you know, take me back to that day, because then you have to walk home. Oh, yeah, from the gym, when this fuckers, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They were, they, they, were, right. they were jealous. That's right. They were jealous. They were very jealous. Today we call them haters. Haters. Yeah. haters. But, you know, but what happened? That's um, kind of cool. And I had a thing. Uh, back then, we had, uh, you, you know, this, the currency was U.S. dollars. So we had the quarters, dollar, and all mm -hmm. that. I had four quarters in my pocket, and I bought four oranges. Mm -hmm. So every three, four miles, I'll eat an orange just to sustain me from the gym. Yeah. I walked all the way home. But guess what? I would walk all the way to the gym every day and all the way home every day of my really? life wow. growing up. Wow. <laughs> that's off. That's that case. I would go there. I would clean the gym. Mm -hmm. I would clean the weights. And we're all man-made weights. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. That guy was so... I mean, he made his own weights. Wow. They got to own the gym. And for, I mean, he had a welder do everything for him. So so from that point from on... From that point on, that was, that's where I wanted to be. And that's who I wanted to become. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it. Well, you can, you've been competing a long time. I know that, you know, we kind of studied up on your contest history, and, you know, Mike was interested to... Uh, well, I, if we looked a little bit, like, what was your, your highest placing at the national level was fourth the last, place in The last was 08. fourth, uh, yes. Uh, North American. And the, the problem was, I'm not a middleweight, I'm right. a light heavy, and I wanted to move up to the heavies. But the coach at the time, uh, all credit's due to him, very smart, uh, he's a nuclear chemist. Uh, yeah. He knew what to do with me, but the problem is I traveled by myself. Sure. And everything was dialed in until 30 minutes before stage time. Mm -hmm. I flattened out. Oh, man. Well, which, and, yeah. and real quick to touch on that, having people with you when you're at a contest, right. I can't put a price on that. It's Big priceless. Time. Wouldn't you guys agree I that agree. having somebody 100%. there, it's, it's, whether it be a coach, a best friend, somebody that knows what somebody they're doing to help you, you out. Yeah. Somebody, someone. Yeah. It's always good to have someone in your corner, be it a friend, like you said, a coach. Right. Or, so, I mean, uh, it was that was my downfall in trying to drop me down the middle. His, his view was, you know, get down the middle, get your pro card, and move on in life. Mm -hmm. But I was never a middle, trying to explain. Like, I'm never, I'm very thick, you mm -hmm. know, I carry a lot of mass. And sacrificing all that to go down the middle, well, and I knew it wasn't going to work, but... I had to listen to my coach, yeah, and I'm not in a position to argue. Yeah, and uh, I, I could see what he was trying to do for me, yeah. you know. Sure. And uh, I did well, you know. But things, as fate may have it, it didn't work in our favor. Right. And I paid the price for it. And the last, the other one I did, I, I did horrible. Was at Masters. Uh, I, 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 one, two, three, four flights. I missed four flights that day. Oh, I was there for 4.30 in the morning. I missed the first flight due to security. The second flight, me and the pilot got into it. They called the cops and got me off the plane. Oh, <laughs> Don't fly United. Yeah. <laughs> you bastards. Don't I lost fly. a lot of money with United. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't fly United. So, so they brought four cops and two other cops I have trained in the past. So it saved my butt from going to jail. Because you had the airport on the plane, yeah. the pilot. Things could get very ugly, so they vouched for me, and the witnesses were there that the pilot was wrong. Uh, the, the irrational thing I did, I should have kept my mouth shut and found a lawyer, <laughs> yeah. but I proceeded to argue with it, got back and forth, pushing him, pushing me, hence the reason I was taken off the plane. It took me to America West, I got to three security, missed the third flight. <laughs> so no food, no water, since what was, I left the house at four in the morning. Uh, and you still came in flat? I, no, that, no. Yeah, that, flat yeah. wasn't the word. <laughs> so I got to Masters uh, 
uh, what's his name, uh, Gary Uyudit said, you know, I'll wait here until you get here. Right. I'm like, look, I've missed four flights. I'm coming in late. I want to check in so I can eat. Yeah. You know, weigh me and get me done so I could eat and hydrate and whatever I need to do. And I got to the hotel. They were all gone. Mm -hmm. Understandably, you know, yeah. Yeah, our check-in's over. It's over. Sure. You know, I didn't think he would wait for me, but and I was hoping he would. Yeah. But, you know... Uh, he had every right to leave. So I went in the next day. I mean, the damage has been done, you know. Uh, and at the time, uh, John Truman was helping me out, and we diaries prematurely, which I think we shouldn't have done that, considering what I went through, the trauma right, right, I went through yeah, the day right. before. Yeah. I shouldn't have done that. It's uh, a science project at this stage. Thank you. Know? you. Um, yeah, it's a uh, guessing. It, it is. So he's like, I'm like, look, I'm, 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 my temperature's freaking high, and I don't think I should be diaresing at this point. He's like, no, I need you to go drop, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you know, and uh, that night was bad. I thought I was going to die, I'm honest. I, I had to crawl you. over the bed, crawl to the toilet, hold the toilet seat, and put my head in the faucet and drink. Wow. Spasm, and I mean, things were going up, like, and you can't explain. Right, the yeah. fear that was in me again. Yeah. So I got on stage, Jim Manion, after I got it, he's like, Striker, you're flat. The last thing you ate. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Jim, you know, it is what it is. This is what I went through, but... Yeah. You know, there'll be another day. Right. See, all of these things that I've gone through, uh, everything happens for a reason. Well, you learn from it. Now you know you it's, learn not, from it. it's not the weight on the scale, it's how you look. Exactly. Right? And that's my, my point always. It's what you look like, it's not the weight. Right. Don't worry about how much you weigh. If you look the part and you're ready, you're going to do great. And disregard the, the rumors of politics and this and that. Right. Uh, have faith in the judges, the IVB judges. Mm -hmm. And. If, if you're dialed in and ready, we, the IDB, will give you the chance to turn pro. Well, we're not going to take that away from right. you or anyone. There's no such thing as a pop. Uh, well, wouldn't you say with that being said, Stryker, that if you do your homework, you can control what you can control, your conditioning, right. your work ethic, you'll get rewarded for it in that manner instead yes. of, you know. That's why I think we all love the sport. Right. Yes. Right. I mean, you have complete yes. control. and. You know, that's the one thing about this sport is when somebody doesn't do what they expect, you find them doing this instead of doing this. Because really, I mean, when it comes down to it, it's ownership here, you know, with, with right. this sport. And so um, I think there's something to be said, you know. I agree with you 100%. And adding to that, uh, there's a, a young bodybuilder here that finally did the Masters. He moved from young to older, uh, Troy Tate. Yeah. Um, where, where, where he was on the show and, and, and his very good uh, friend. We give him, I give him a lot of credit for sticking to I've known Troy for many, many years, having stuck to it all these years, finally attaining that goal. Got way. So it goes back to the point if, like you said, you did your homework, uh, he never gave up, he got the right help from mm -hmm. George, and finally went to Masters and he got his pro card. Right. He was, I've never seen him look this good. I uh, totally agree. Yeah. Troy you know, Tate looking great. He looked awesome, and yeah, right. I know, hats off to him. And we hope we all can help him out, and hope to see more people like Troy, you, you. Uh, I mean, but outside of bodybuilding, I mean, right. you, you give a lot back, lot back to the sport. I do. You're an IFBB promoter. You got the, you know, you brought the pro professional. Got the Phoenix Pro. You got the Phoenix Pro. You brought that in here. I mean, you have a training team. I know that you got a lot going on. You right. all kinds of things here. At what's Phoenix. going so, on with yeah, that? Tell, tell, tell everybody the Phoenix, about what's going on. With the you. Phoenix Pro. We're going to leave it for another episode. But I'm going to give you some light on it. But the main announcement. I'm going to give you guys a chance to be the first to put it out there. Uh, the nice. Phoenix, the Phoenix Pro is coming back next year. I'm not going to tell you exactly what month. It'll be a little in the middle of the year. Mm -hmm, cool. But it's for sure. Uh, it's going to be very big. Cool. Uh, nice. At least four divisions. And since we started the Phoenix Pro, we've never done less than three divisions, including the men's division, men's mm -hmm. open. Uh, the Phoenix Pro is one of the highest ranking shows. Everybody knows it. It's a, it's a very prestigious show, and it's Arizona's own show. Right. The people of Arizona should take pride in the Phoenix Pro. We, we totally agree. Yeah. Uh, they need to support the Phoenix Pro as much as they can. Uh, basically, what the Phoenix Pro has done has taken Arizona from the Stone Age to the 21st century. Mm -hmm. You know, with more like went from 1980, 1979 to 2013. Right. I mean, if you look for the Phoenix, it's put Arizona in, on the map as the state of bodybuilding. And you're absolutely correct. And that's, I mean, and we're saying that, and, and we're seeing it more than anything, is that you're seeing this state's bringing in 
a yeah. lot of pros. It's we're putting out a lot of pros. We're putting out top NC, NP, NPC athletes. I mean, you're, you're absolutely correct, and you hit it on the and you're the first person to actually hit that here on the show. Is this is a growing state? We need to collectively, as one, make this grow from the NPC level right to the pro level. Exactly. You know? uh, the people of Arizona, especially here in Phoenix, they need to stand behind the IBB. Mm -hmm. uh, having the IBB in Arizona is a plus. Uh, it's a very good, uh, it brings a good atmosphere to bodybuilding in Arizona. And not only that, it, it brings great pride. Yeah. Right. You know, Arizona's never had anything. Well, you as a you promoter, know. I mean, so much passion. And, exactly. you know, how you talk about taking bodybuilding to another level and uh, bringing it back to the forefront, you know, back when it was on CBS and then it was on ESPN. I mean, talk about, you know, you have a, a pretty good vision. I was always right. impressed with that uh, when I met you actually officially at the uh, Phoenix Pro, but we had a chance to talk. But uh, talk about your philosophy of, you know, taking it to the other level, getting it back to the, uh, you know, getting more recognition for, for athletes. It's, it's no uh, accident that you're on the show today, right? Uh, the first thing I want to start with for the, the athletes need to be rewarded. Mm -hmm. You see, you go through the amateur ranks your whole life, and you finally turn pro. At that point, that, that's where you need to be compensated and rewarded. And that goes back to supplement companies. Mm -hmm. Without you, the bodybuilder, there would be no such thing as supplement right. companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I urge and I challenge these companies to give a hand to every IBD pro and every up-and-coming NPC competitor um, any company, for that matter, that's had, that had benefited or still benefits from the sport of bodybuilding. Right. The last time, I was, I'm really disappointed, last sponsor I talked to was saying he's sponsoring NASCAR. Huh. And he wouldn't give me $1,000 to sponsor the Phoenix Pro. My <laughs> argument with this uh, uh, former sponsor is people go to NASCAR to drink beer, eat chips, and whatever the hell they do. Right. You know, they don't go to take a protein shake with them and drink it. Right. Yeah. A bodybuilder, be it an amateur or a pro, at some point he's going to grab a protein shake or a pre-workout and do what he needs to do. He's not going to go grab a Budweiser. No. No, so, I grab both. Yeah. Pre-workout. I, I could, you know, <laughs> depending on your need. But so my point is, uh, I think the they've, they've, they've drifted their attention to other things than to benefit the people that made who they are today. Uh, you spent, more part of you want to spend, sponsor NAS, NASCAR, uh, hey, so be it, that's your money. But don't forget of the bodybuilding community, the global bodybuilding community that has made it possible for you to enjoy the lavish lifestyle that you have today. Yeah. So, and then them turning their back on promoter like me and athletes as you, such as yourself who wants to move further or further uh, it's not good. So that's where it needs, that's the source. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, I like to see bodybuilding more mainstream. Yeah. Uh, so therefore it goes back more to economics. Mm -hmm. So if we can have companies that are up there that have benefited from us or from our predecessors, uh, provide the necessary finances in as little as possible, then bodybuilding will be out there. It will be back on ESPN or yeah. C-SPAN right. right back in the day. Right. Yeah. There's no reason why we're not on get there. Get the Olympia back at the Mandalay Get, a, get, the get it back there. Right. You can make it more another pay-per-view event like it used to be. Right. Yeah. But there's something uh, uh, AMI, uh, Robin Chang, much respect to him. I'm sure they know what they're doing, and I hope someday they can bring that back. Well, we need more people that have that same drive and that vision that you have. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, you don't hear that that often, and we really would love um, to get back to the forefront because, you know, you know, we'll talk about the champ now. You know, Phil Heath, he played college basketball to, at a very high level. But what does he say? Bodybuilding is much more difficult sport. It's the most difficult sport he's ever done. So. Uh, you know, a college basketball player gets a hell of a lot more attention than a professional bodybuilder. Right, player. and there's yeah, no that's question. Kind of sad. Yeah, that's as sad. competitors, we yeah. know what the sacrifices is to be a, a bodybuilder and what you give up. Not only do you have to give up, and, and, and it has to be a daily thing, but you give up your life. Literally, you give up portions yeah. of your life for this sport. And to not be compensated on that level once you earn that pro card, I think your point is so yeah. valid that, that you know, that's something that we do need to address. Yeah. Outside of bodybuilding, what's going on with well, you? Yeah, I think you had one, two, three. You have one more thing? I have one oh, more sorry, thing. <laughs> I saw you said that. Uh, yeah. Tell him. Yeah. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> one more. 
uh, another thing is uh, people need to understand what promoters come from. Everything I do, I've invested, everything I have, uh, use my influence with friends that are fortunate enough to help, that have been blessed with wealth, to help me bring this Phoenix Pro to Arizona and stuff like that. Um, I like people of Arizona to know what people like Striker X or VJ or my best. Uh, being a promoter is a very tough job. It's, it's almost like uh, a guy who goes to the seminary and becomes uh, a preacher, for example. He's given up a lot. Yeah, right. I've given up, like you said, your family, your life. Uh, I would never give up my family, but they're making sacrifices for what I want to achieve in my, uh, for my dream, for example. Yeah. Uh, when we put these shows on, I like them to put themselves in our shoes. Uh, the sacrifices I have to make uh, to put a pro show on. Yeah. Uh, it's not like putting an NPC show on. Uh, when you put in a pro show on, you're talking, in, in terms of finances, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. Right. Right. Yeah. It's not a walk in the park. I could buy three houses with the money that I raise for each show. Mm -hmm. So I like them to understand what someone like me or any other pro promoter goes through to put the show on. And for me, you try to help me in the past to see if you can get me some sponsors. Yeah. Uh, it's not easy getting sponsors and... Uh, so at the end of the day, I have to write the check. Yeah. And a lot of times, the last Desert Muscle Classic, we had very poor attendance, although the show was a class act. Um, my last check that I wrote was the last check that drained my account. Yeah. So having said that, I like him to understand that what I have to go through to make this possible. And yeah, people want it even if they don't want to sponsor the show. I mean, is there a way to get a hold of you to donate? To donate? Is it buy yeah. a ticket or... You know, how, do people, ticket, how do people support the show other than sponsoring the show? Buy a ticket, fill the seat, watch. and I want them to understand that even if I fill every seat in the house, I still don't take home a dollar. See, that's what we're talking about, giving back to the you sport. Know, right? I wouldn't, it's beautiful. If you do the math, if I sell every seat in the house, morning and night, I still do not take home a dollar. You know, If you add the cost of the show, that won't even equate to half of what the show costs. Right. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, I still go home. I have to go train my clients, uh, like everybody else. Sure. Uh, you know, and tell people, I mean, you know, obviously you have a very successful training team. I, mean, I have a very good team. Uh, we do uh, locally here, out of state, out of the country. We work with a lot of people, uh, especially private people. You know, we we try to change the market from just training competitors to train to training uh, because you have to understand we have to bring in as much uh, help into the community, into athletes. So we, I've managed to, and not manage, I've been fortunate enough to say the right word, to meet very influential people in the business community that uh, I've been training to help me facilitate certain things. So I'm gearing my market towards more, you know, film stars, uh, you know, influential people, wealthy people, you know, and uh, we're, we're grateful to have them with us because every dollar they I get from them goes to the we're Phoenix Pro and the Desert Muscle Classic, yeah. and uh, I'm blessed in that way. And two, it goes back to character. Uh, what you do comes back to you in ten folds. So, you know, this. How many uh, times do we say that? <laughs> and Lord, I know. Right. And and which so. brings me, uh, you see, what I want to see the bodybuilding community as everybody come together. Yeah. I like the animosity, the, uh, I don't want to say the backstabbing, it's a harsh word, but something in that, you know, realm, I like to see that gone. Yeah. I want to see Mike go talk to John Doe, he was a bodybuilder like himself, even not, even a, an average person in the gym, hey man, how you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, right. what can I do for you? And, you know, and, that's, you? and, we're, and that's really like what we try to pass through is giving back to people because, again, I think we can all attest that We've run into bodybuilders that are very giving and very outgoing and are willing to help out, but we run into some that yes. aren't so much, and it really sticks so yes. hard. And then all the other th things that get thrown right. at us and are stuck at us, that's why they get reinforced. That's right. why they get reinforced is because of negative stuff that's going on out there. Right. If it doesn't involve you, you really don't need to be right. in it, you know? And, and you're right. We need to come together collectively as right. a community 
and make this thing one. Because if we don't, all we're really doing is breaking it down. Right. You know. I called you yesterday. We were right. uh, you were actually hooking on hold, and you were calling <laughs> mandatories. So I, I mean, it's not just. I mean, obviously, you talked about the whole. You right. know. You know, from level A to level Z, but right. you were calling mandatory, so obviously you're in, still involved with coaching. Very, very much. So, if someone uh, wants to coach you, would they come down to the Independence Gym? Do they go to your website? Uh, the web, the, all three websites are down. We trying to redo everything because of the Phoenix Pro coming up next year, uh, and the Desert Muscle Classic, uh, the Striker X website, the home, the, the home website. All that's all getting redone. Um, all they have to do is call me at Independence Gym. Uh, or come down to the gym. Independence Gym is down in Scottsdale. Thomas and Hayden. Thomas and Hayden. Uh, and I'm here, you know, they, they have access to me to talk to me, uh, whatever questions or who I can refer them to in the community. Mm -hmm. If I don't have the time, um, if I'm busy, what, what have you. Uh, but I still coach a lot of people, uh, especially competitors. Um, Saturdays, I do a posing clinic uh, for every competitor at mm -hmm. 3 o'clock every Saturday. Some men and women. Men and women from right. fitness all the way to men's bodybuilding. Yeah, it's also an MPC and IFBB judge too, right? Um, I wouldn't want to get into IFBB judging as being a promoter. Uh, oh, you can't? Oh, okay. Probably can. You can, but I have chosen. I don't want to go that direction. Well, which, you were an MPC is, judge. Yeah, an MPC head judge. Did you judge my show? Yes, sir. Yeah. Many, many moons. <laughs> 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 I judge your first show. Yeah. Yeah, so I, wherever you go in the sport, I remember who you are. Right you, you, can't, you can't fool me. <laughs> Anybody um, you want to thank out there, Striker, that, that uh, helps you get to, to where you're at, helps you keep uh, everything moving forward? One person I want to thank, I know it'll come to you as a surprise. Uh, I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> but um, uh, one... Uh, the other people I'm going to uh, name first, uh, Jay Cutler, uh, very good friend of mine, um, much respect and love for him, um, Jim Mannion for putting up with my bullshit for <laughs> <laughs> being a troublemaker, uh, so I've been told, uh, uh, I hope he has more patience for me, um, and taking my time to pay him, it's not easy, you know, uh, but the person, people may be surprised, uh, Arizona APC Chairman Miles. Oh, nice. Because uh, it's whether I agree or he agrees with me on principle, it doesn't really matter. Right. Uh, but I want to give thanks to him because I was the MPC head judge here and he made that possible. Um, and for that, I would like to thank him, to be honest with you. Uh, it's awesome you say that on the show. You know, um... He does put on a great show. I mean... We... J Miles does a good job promoting his show, uh... And I hope to see things... More things from him, uh, in the future, and, uh... You know, and him coming around to the community and, you know, giving a little more, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but... I hope things get better in Arizona, you know. Well, but, platforms like this, with with your voice, with with our show, with everything coming, you know, with us reaching out, that's yeah. what, that's what we're doing. You know right. what I mean? Slowly but surely, we're going to get that momentum going right. and moving forward. And it goes back to one brick at the, a time. The, pa the past is the past, and we'll move from here. Right. Like, where can we go from here? Right. Uh, from here, all I have to do is shake your hand and and bear the past and move on. You know, if we all can do that. Regardless of what our egos and our status and where we're at in life, if we can move collectively, like Mike had said earlier, uh, I think we'll do a great job as a Bible community in, here in Arizona. You know, uh, I hope to see that. Yeah. Well said. Back, back to you as a competitor. I know you obviously have the fire and stuff. Right, still love it. Obviously, you're putting, you're doing a hell of an off season. <laughs> so, what's next for you? On when, when you next, when we see you uh, on if life permits, or my Grumpy clients, allow me. <laughs> uh, I want to do Masters next year. Uh, in 2014. 2014, but uh, it's not easy, you know. If you're coaching and also having the, the promotion company for the for the IVB here in Arizona, uh, I have other things going on. Sure. You know, and we understand. At the end of the day, I have, you know, like you guys. Yeah. I have to pay the bills. Uh, I got to make sure the kids eat. Yep. 
And you have, a, speaking of paying the bills, you do have a sponsor. I don't know if it's a personal sponsor. We have McWorsey Mid- Mead is coming on board with Striker X uh, in a good way to help us out because they understand that they've been a very good sponsor from day one, uh, and they've been helping the athletes with their meals and stuff. They're always they've at the shows. A great job. Yeah, they're 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 you know, and I can see where their passion is coming from. Mm-hmm. Uh, the owner, Rod, he's approached me on the subject. And uh, something I would have never done to have somebody in, be involved with Strike Rex, but I understand his heart and where he's coming from. I welcomed him in open, with open arms to bring him on board and help us out. So they're going to help us in a big way to for the next Phoenix Pro, per se. And keep moving forward. And keep moving. But... Uh, Hopefully we can do a next segment and then we'll announce the date of the Phoenix Pro and the divisions we're doing. Um, and I think we have enough pros in Arizona to bring together and and feature these people. You know, you're going to have the 12 class. I am most likely, 99.9% I'm having the 212, uh, but I also like to have the men's open, open division as course. we've always done. The Phoenix Pro yeah. known for the men's open. Uh, However, whether it happens or not, we're working on it. We still have eight, nine months to go uh, to facilitate the men's open division. Again, it goes back, who do we have as a sponsor to jump on board to help us with the men's open? Uh, it's a big ticket item. Anybody want to get involved out there, if you <laughs> see it, get a hold of any of us. We definitely put Mike, you in, the, in, in, in VJ touch with Stryker. We'll help you out and bring you to the torture chamber here. That's right. <laughs> and we'll take your money. <laughs> But we'll give you a lot in return. Absolutely. Uh, So, yeah, uh, Midwestern Meat, I want to thank them a lot uh, for being there for the athletes. I mean, if you see what they really do for the pro athletes, for the Olympia and stuff, I mean, the meals are delivered to the doorstep, to the hotel, wherever they're at. And that's very good for the athletes. That's the last thing you need to worry about, your meals and stuff. Midwestern Meat does that and brings it to you, you know. And I appreciate and thank him for helping the athletes and helping us here in Arizona promoting our shows. Right. Uh, it's a big deal. Uh, so again, stand behind the Phoenix Pro. You know, I yeah. tell everybody it's it's your, here in Arizona. We've given you the franchise, so it's up to you, the, yeah. the people of Arizona, to exercise that franchise. Right. Yeah. We've given you the Phoenix Pro. So the success and the longevity of the Phoenix Pro depends on the people of Arizona. Not on me. I've done what I could. Sure. You know, I've done what no one wanted to do or was capable capable of doing until today. Uh, and I'm yet to see the support that I want for the Phoenix Pro from the people in Phoenix. We have people flying from Europe to watch the Phoenix Pro. Yeah. But then we have some of the community here not even buying a ticket to come. The guy from Europe coming all the way here to watch the Phoenix Pro. But it's right in your backyard and... I didn't see you. Right, again, that's just coming down to supporting our local bodybuilding. Exactly. Right, right over, over to, you know, the pro level as well. We all have to come in as one, you know, because, again, it, it, we, we got to fill the seats. We're having a pro show here. we got to fill the seats. We I have mean, to fill the simple. seats. Yeah. And we're going to make it affordable, a little more than we've had in the past. Okay. So no one has a re- excuse or a reason why I can't buy a ticket. Um Melissa has vowed to buy 10 tickets. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many more she's going to buy for all her girlfriends, you know. But I hope she can step it up. I hope I'm not talking smack for uh, Melissa. You're going to pitch in, right? <laughs> okay. She's giving us the sum of it now. You, you, you're the you're IBB family now. That's so you're going to respond to You have to. Yeah. You're obligated. <laughs> Well, dude, we're so stoked to have you on. The yeah, show. we'll have you back on you know, the uh, have pleasure. you on when when we get closer to the show as well. Um, and uh, I want to commend you guys. I don't want to cut you off. No, you're fine. Yeah. You guys are looking awesome. I'm kind of scared right now, being between. <laughs> I'm intimidated, you know. This is you guys like serious mass going on here. Yeah, here. Well, we, we are we're in a like, growing phase. Yeah. What the what hell's going on? You eat babies or? <laughs> just trying to be big. That's it. We just want to be big. Just want to be big. Dude. I want to get enough protein too. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk on? after this. <laughs> guys, Again, guys, guys, we appreciate yeah, it. Right, guys. The Mike Eaton Bodybuilding Show. Support the Phoenix Pro, people. Phoenix Pro. We also want to want to give a shout out to Peoria Ford, our sponsor as well. Um, you guys go down and see Pat Higley. Mention the show. We'll get a discount on any Ford down there at Peoria Ford. That's right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.